guys ego complex let's go over the 200 moving average i had this on as an ema by accident it's my default settings in my chart so i had to redo this video real quick and remove the old one that i just posted so here we go so 200 moving average we're impacting it now i previously said it would be just above us about 100 points but we're in it now that's what's stopping the rise from the candle um, you can see it's spearing us in the side why is this significant why am i talking about it well, because we started this range battling the 200 back here on June 14th, right? Actually, June 13th. Rejected it here, made some progress above it, rejected it again, got above it. And then we lose, we lose velocity, start falling, start falling, start falling, and we get back below it. Use it as support here, we get back below it, pop back above it. You can see the stepping down here, right? This is this this circled area is where on YouTube everybody's talking about 50k Bitcoin. So we ended up essentially testing this from June 13th until June 18th, this five day period where we're up above it, below it, up above it, below it. And when we were finally rejected, I showed you this already, but let me show you again because it's significant because that's what we're battling right now and we're halfway above it, just like we were before. So this is significant because this declination of price was just about 9,100 points, okay? So that's if you take it from there. If you want to take it from a different area, because it was actually higher, you know, it depends where you want to consider the price fall. I'm taking it from that final rejection. If you want to take it from, you know, your peak of where you were in price, which you could also do because that's the beginning of the trend change, right? So the trend change would be up here, and that's just a massive fall. But you can see you have your doji, and then you have your sell off and it's stepping down. So, I mean, you could, it's not technically wrong to take this and go all the way down with it. And then you're seeing, I have to shrink this down. That's how big of a drop that is. You could take this ruler, start from up here. That's peak price in the down, beginning of the downtrend, as you can see the downtrend forming, right? And you're looking at 12,466 points. Okay. So I did it from here, which is the final rejection. Uh, but again, you would do it from the beginning of the trend. Point being, let's just say the 10,000 number is what we're looking at, right? So you have a 10,000 final rejection and you have a 12,000 from a peak price point. Where we are right now is we're being stabbed in the side on the four hour chart by the 200. Now you're looking at this, the, the next four hour candle could form above, it should form right up here at the price line if this holds for an hour, but it could come down here, it could come down here. Um, it just depends if the candle's gonna come back down because look how extended we are from the EMAs and then be stabbed again. This pattern that it's doing right now is literally what it did over here, as you can see, right? It's, we got past the candle, or we got past the moving average, it stabbed us in the side, rescinded us. We got past it again, it stabbed us in the side, you know, but we were still above it. So price opened above it and it got pulled back down. And then buyers stepped in. See the volume here? See the volume here? Buyers stepped in, boom, got above it, but no velocity. And then we just hovered above it, falling back down. And this is rele relevant because of where we're at in Bitcoin, right? So where we're at in Bitcoin is this is the next step up. We got past the 35, this bright red line here that took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe nine or 10 candles. I don't know if you want to count that one as a hit. So that took, you know, 36 hours on four hour candles to, to, to work with. Now this took days, right? This took several days, five days to have this range and we're in the first candle now. So this could get above and come back down. This pattern could literally look like this because look at this steep step up, right? You have the same steep step up here. Patterns repeat themselves in charting oftentimes, right? That's why it's that's why I call it pattern trading. You have the steep step up here, steep step up here. You got your black candles, black candles. You get this is your consolidation range, this little group, and then you got your step up. Here we have the consolidation range, which took more candles because we're in a cloud. You were you were in no resistance here. You're in a cloud, and then you step up, right? So we have our step up here, just like this, and this is what happened afterwards. So we could step up from here to above it and then make the same type of top pattern almost coming back down into the into this and basically resting on this resistance. Obviously, uh, for for the bears, for people that think we have a downturning market, which we are in a bearish, a bearish market with a bullish tendency right now, right? 
but you could see something like this happen where price basically, you know, comes up a little bit, comes back over, comes back down. It's getting hit by in the side by the 200 moving average, comes back up, comes back down. And the ideal situation for the bears would be you get back below that resistance and you're trading in here, right? Because then you're legging down. You made a move and then you, you leg down. And that's just something that could happen. Um, doesn't mean it will happen. You have to you have to look at the patterns as they exist, and then also understand that this is a bearish pattern overall, and we're making progress in a range, right? So our range, however, is shrinking. So everybody likes to talk about range trading. Um, I talk about it all the time too. May twelfth, we started up here, right? Fifty-seven thousand points. May twelfth, fifty-seven thousand points, and we're looking at. 36,000 right now. So that's, I mean, by definition, you're in a bear market. You can look it up in Investopedia. I think it'll tell you three months of declining price or whatever. We're May, June, July. You know, we're, we're, we're essentially trading in a bear market regardless of the time frame. And we have these waves up and down within this pennant. My descending triangle that has been drawn since May 12th. We fall below the, you see the line here? We fall below the descending triangle get pulled back into it, fall below, pull back into it, fall below, back in, below, back in. You see the same pattern going and going, right? And then you get above it too. You get above it, fall back in it. So the triangle actually needs to be extended at this point because of the time frame. So, but what you have here is very key because this was a big battle last time. Now this could be just be a two candle battle today. We don't know, right? We have no idea. We have no idea how, how hard it's going to pump. We have no idea how hard the FOMO is going to be. And we're just watching it. But for people putting in longs and shorts for long, you're going to want to get above the 200 and close above it because we got above the 200 here and closed several candles above it and we came back down. So this is a very important moving average. And for people doing shorts, you know, you got to be aware that this next candle could form up here and could just go up, right? Because that's where your price point is right now. Could also pull back down. So it's a dangerous area to be entering in. You have to watch for patterns. And right now we don't have a pattern. We have one candle. So one candle does not make a pattern. We have a can we have candles rising into it and we have a candle stuck in the moving average. So that's not a pattern just yet. Um, but just be aware of this guys. This is what's holding up the price. And, um, you know, we are, we are, Short-term bullish, as I said, beating the 35, and I told you I don't think we'll beat the 200. And having said that, I mean, we're literally half a candle above it, right? So it looks promising, but everybody thought this was very promising too. Like when we got into it and got above it for many, multiple candles and fell back down. doesn't mean that'll happen again. Obviously, multiple factors are in the marketplace. The marketplace changes day to day, hour to hour. Uh, but that's where we stand right now. I expect to see a little bit. This candle closes in about 45 minutes. Expect to see another last minute pump here. Try to break free maybe. And then and then it should rescind some. And then it's, the next candle is the most interesting candle. Because if it stays above the 200 and just moves up, this was a quick break. Then this resistance was nothing. If it opens up above the 200 but turns black and goes down, also very interesting means that the volume dropped off because you got a bullish cross here on the four hour uh, on the MACD. So it's interesting to see how this plays out. You extend it from your EMAs. You could have it rescind and retrace. Uh, just keep an eye on it, guys, and uh, keep making money. Good luck trading.